Zion today, Father God. Look down on Mount Zion today, Father God. Let your anointing ring like never before, Father God. Oh God, let us love, Father God, like never before, God. Oh God, we ask you to renown right now in the name of Jesus. God, reunite right now in the name of Jesus. Restore right now in the name of Jesus. God, we speak to that marriage problem right now, God. Oh, God, we speak to that job situation right now, God. We say reunite right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, restore your anointing, God, like never before, God. Restore your power like never before, God. Oh, God, we speak to the mountain right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we speak it, God. We speak, God. We speak prosperity, God. Oh God, we speak deliverance, God. We speak deliverance, God. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, we ask you to cover our leaders this morning. God, give it to them, God, whatever they need, whatever they stand in the blessing, yes, God. God. We yes. ask you right now, God, everybody that is represented here this yes. morning, Father God. Oh, God, we ask you to go and tear down the strongholds in their house, God. Yes. Oh, God, we ask you to go down and tear down the weary hours of the night, Father God. Oh, God, we declare and decree victory right now in the name of Jesus. Right now, God, we thank you this morning. Lord, we thank you. We thank you this morning, God. God, we thank you this morning, Father God. Oh, God, when we look back over our life, God, we tell you, thank you, God. But if it had not been for you, God, on our side, oh, God, where would we be for today, God? We tell you, thank you. We lift our voice up and tell you, thank you. Thank you right now, God. Thank you, God, for dying on the cross. God, thank you for seeing the good when everybody else saw the bad. We'll be so careful yes. to give you all the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name, in Jesus name. Amen. 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 How many are ready to go higher in the Lord? Yeah. Let's go higher. Let's go higher. Let's go higher in the Lord. Y'all with us this morning? Yes, all right, we're going to go ahead and turn it over to the best praise team on this side of heaven. Amen. Yeah.
on time God. He's an on time God. I believe when we know he's an on time God. The song says you ought to run and tell that. Tell somebody that he's an on time God.
how good God has been for you. We know how good He's been to minister here. And how good He's been to you. Everybody was able to wake up this morning. Sound mind. Yes, live and live. Yes, TV and live. Yes, you know how to run the test for you. Yes, Thank you, Lord. You know how to wake up and say, Thank you, Lord. God, you spared me, God. Yes, yes. I want to run and tell somebody about that. Yes, I got to tell somebody how good God has been to me. We are all witnesses of the kingdom of the Lord. So if you can't run and tell somebody what God has done for you, I don't want to be right. I don't want to be right. So if you do it for me, I'm going to hold back on him. I can't hold back on him, man. He's going to the pits of hell. Literally. Watch me wipe the snow, so I'm gonna really tell them. So I'm with you, my brother. You have to wave your hands and tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. We will not have our God's son. Can we all please stand?
Uh, the prayer corner, the intercessors council will be available for prayer at Mount Zion Calumet Christian Church every third Monday evening whoop, whoop. from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Amen. Do we have any visitors today? Thank you for worshiping with us Come on in. today. Our prayer is that you will discover the limitless love that yeah. the Father has for you. Yeah. Mount Zion Tabernacle Christian Church uh -huh. is a place of worship where yeah. we as believers uh -huh. we assemble through our faith in God, yeah. focus in Jesus Christ, uh -huh. and through the Holy Spirit. Welcome you from first from my pastor and first lady. Yeah. I got another announcement. If you happen to see Pastor and First Lady, say yeah. amen. premature birth and birth defects. Yeah. And if you did not know, my daughter, Tiana, was a preemie. Yes. Three pounds, nine ounces. And um, thank God she didn't have any birth defects. So, so I'll have ribbons next Sunday. The light blue is for um, if you have a premature child or if you were premature. The dark blue is for a healthy child. White is if you lost a child. And gray, I have to find out what gray is. But I'll, I'll have the board um, in the back will be decorated and we'll do a presentation from my sorority, based, um, State of Barbados Sorority Incorporated. Because we're also um, doing a community event thing, making everyone aware of it. And also, if you see someone that is missing today, call them. Let's call and let's get, I know we, we always get a little scarce around the, the holidays. It, this is it's not new to us, right? We, we're used to this. And December will be full, of, I mean, January will be full again. That's how it always is. January to yeah, mid-December, <laughs> they'll start coming back. January will be good. Uh -huh. November, it'll start looking like this again. But call the people, and a lot of people are on vacation. Um, since Diana is in Indiana, um, Mother Anita is still out sick. We, we have a lot of people that are either out sick and on vacation. But still call them, yes, let's check yes, on yes. our sisters and brothers. Yes. Amen. 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 
I used to not just for one moment at a time. Um, with that being said, how many know that God can give you things just like that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going I'm 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 to use one of the poorest words she gave me earlier this morning. Um, Y'all might get mad at me. God has given you so much in these seven days we were out. Did we not enjoy ourselves there? too caught up, and I'm not knocking one or the other because I grew up in them. I don't get sold into denominations. And here's why. It's a teaching moment. Because if you are a ministry built on what I call restoration and deliverance, can I teach this? Yes, come on, Reverend. People will come. It's almost like this is close I can make it to an analogy. You got people that have natural issues. They go to a place where they get counseling, and or therapy and or things to help them get back on track. They leave from that place sometimes not having the gratitude or the acknowledgement of where they got what they needed. Mm. They believe that they accomplished it on their own and in part they did. Mm -hmm. Yet had they not had the proper people, places and things around them to keep them restored, uh -huh. to help keep them delivered, they venture back out thinking they're ready for a cruel world without any support group to come back to. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Yes. And so what they do is eventually they, as quote unquote, fall off the wagon again. Mm -hmm. Here's where it gets crazy. When they fall off, either shame, guilt, mm -hmm. or pride will not allow them to make peace. From the one place they knew, not thought, mm -hmm. not guessed, not hoped, mm -hmm. they knew and believed got them to a place of restoration yes. and desire. Uh -huh. This makes sense so much. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why do you say that, Pastor? Because we've seen it over and over and 
over again. I tell people that me and my wife may be novices in our age. We're young. <laughs> but I know I carry an old spirit. I know I do. People tell me all the time, I know it's true. I, I, I have an older, mature spirit about me spiritually. And I know when things are going left or right. Just understand, in my role, some things God will not allow me to get involved with. Some things have to manifest a certain way so that it blesses somebody else later, as crazy as it may look. Can you picture all the chaotic things Moses had to do with those ten plagues? Ten of them. You know how many people probably talk behind his back saying he don't, he don't, he don't, God, they don't want a court. He must be off track. He must, God punishing them because he not living right. You know how many people probably sat there and did that after, not the first plague, the second plague, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth. And then by the tenth plague, they finally said, okay, maybe this guy is in tune with the Lord. <laughs> what am I saying? You know what each one of these chairs represent? Empty rows. And in every row, there's a seed that needs to be planted. Hence the problem. That's me, not me and my wife's job. Amen. That's y'all's job. <laughs> sheep with their sheep. That makes sense? Yeah. So you have to ask yourself, how far am I willing to go ahead? Well, glad you asked. God gave me a couple of things. Uh, Mother Natalie, we stand. We have prayed, me and my wife have talked, I spoke to my pastor, he was in agreement. Uh, we spoke with Mother Natalie, she has accepted, she will become our chairman of Christian education. <laughs> She does an awesome job doing Bible study. She comes in, she does Sunday school. She will be heading up our new members class that has been lacking. I will take the blame. Amen. It is my fault. Amen. But I thank God because I'm built on consistency. And it's hard to give it to just anybody and hope it work out. So I'd rather not do it at all. That's the kind of person I am. If I don't believe we can keep it consistent, we're just not going to do it. This is what I try to explain to people over time. People, the people are built on repetition. So when you bring an idea to me, and it's not nothing to say that you don't know what you're talking about. However, most people bring you an idea because it works for them. Mm -hmm. They thought about it. They can make Saturday at 2 o'clock, so that's why they do it. Change it to 4 and you lost them, right? That's just how people operate. Well, in leadership, you have to think about the, the masses yeah. as a whole. I don't know why I'm going here, but I'm going to take what God wants to go. So that everybody can understand that even if you can't make it, there are still people in place yes. to get it going. Ministry leaders, when you schedule meetings, you need to schedule meetings that you can make, okay. not what other people can make. Because if you're the ministry leader and you're not there, hey, hey, hey. the meeting goes lacking mm -hmm. right. and someone else has to pick up the slack. Now, here's a problem with that. Not that it's a bad thing, but listen, they probably won't have the passion or the purpose that you have. Come on, Reverend. Y'all so quiet. It's all right. I've been on both seven days. I'm in a good place. So I want to encourage you all that when God begins to start putting things, this is the fall season, right? Winter season. This is all into that. Everything's been pulled up. We're getting ready for New Year's Eve. That's the kickoff right. to your new year. Uh -huh. Why do you got to wait till New Year's Eve to know what you need to do for the Lord? Uh -huh. hmm? Come on, yes. you, need a, you need a 10 o'clock service to get you inspired about what you need to do next year? You ought to be inspired today. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen? What that mean to say? My beautiful mother's boy, and all that God has for you. And somebody going to say, I knew it was coming. <laughs> 2019, every first, not every first Sunday, every quarter in the first Sunday of the month, I will need one mother to do Sunday school. Amen. Amen. We will teach Sunday school. Amen. 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 You don't have to be so theologically sound that you've been up for four nights trying to figure it all out. It could be your favorite scripture and what it means to you 
and how it can bless some young people in their lives. That makes sense. All this knowledge over here, these young people need to hear from it. The reason I do a lot of things that I do, guys, is because if you don't expose people to you in other areas of your life, when you do come to them, they hear you, but they don't listen. You understand me? Yeah. So you have to give them every opportunity to see that what you say first is in your heart. Right? Never before it comes from your lips because it matches in your life. Ain't God good? Amen. 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 Ah, with that being said, praise him. We're on the road today. Amen. From now on, from now on, every month, you will host a meeting, and in the midst of your meeting, whether you practice or not, you think you practice, you need to find 10 minutes in the, in the, in the final realization of the meeting that one of you all will teach something. Every one of you. Amen. Amen. Ain't God doing some great things. Boy, it's quiet in here, but I'm on the road. Amen. Ushers, greeters, you will start a meeting. At least once a month, finding a way to come together, and someone in that meeting will teach something in the form of serving. Amen? Amen. Amen. Quiet. Amen. Yeah, it's all right. God do a great thing. Amen. 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 Prayer counselor. Yes. When you all meet on your third Monday night, if time permits, and I pray it will, you will find each one of you will have a turn to bring something of education in the realm of praying from Scripture. Amen? Amen. Ain't God moving? Yes, Amen. 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 This is what God gave me. I didn't Amen. make none of this stuff up. Amen? Amen? He said in the next season that we're getting ready to go in, he's trying to prepare you. And I want you to go back into Exodus and read it more. You will begin to see God was in so many ways, getting Moses prepared for another assignment. Mm -hmm. His departure was more than one reason. Mm -hmm. He was getting Moses ready for another assignment. And I said, I'm going anywhere. I'm not saying that he's going to take me up in the world. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is, I will not have a church that if I was not present, be uneducated right. and ineffective. Right. Amen? Amen. So your theme for 20... 19 will be, we can do more with less. <laughs> we can do more with less. Amen? Amen. Please, please, please. We and our beautiful wife have the best opportunity to sit under great leadership our entire time. I'm telling you, you're sitting under great Amen. 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 Because I go and speak with those more mature than I, more educated than I, more quote unquote successful, if you want to use that word, than I in this. And I bear my heart. I tell it all. And they help me in the areas I need help in. However, what I have to agree with is they never leave me lacking. Amen? Amen. And they said, son, you ain't going through nothing no other church ain't going through. You're not having, you're not having any issue that any other church don't have. Pick them out. You just haven't been over there yet. And you go over there and you don't know anything. Then after about three Sundays, it all makes sense to you. <laughs> <laughs> Amen? Amen? So what I will say this for where you are now, you're in a great place with a pastor and a first lady oh, yes. who love you, yes. who are available. Yes. Now, I will be honest. I have boundaries on certain things. There are certain things that God has given me that I cannot change. There are certain parameters that he has set in leadership that I cannot change. Maybe I use the word won't change. Maybe I'm just talking to me. But I cannot change him. Because the first day I change him, then I got to change him from now on. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? And once you do that, People, you can't go back and say, well, you know, that was, a, I, I, I did it. People will take advantage of you. When you changed last month, 
Nine little now I can't do that this month. So that's why consistency is big for me. Amen? Amen. It's not simple parenting 101, is it not? Yes. Yes. Once you let your child do something, you know you don't agree with. Yes. Yes. Amen? Amen. You can't go back to them and tell them they can't do it. Right. Amen? Right. Right. You have to let them know why you do these things. And the presence of God is the direction. I do my best to try to not do anything on my own. I really don't. Because I got an answer to it. I'd rather say God set me in place to do this. And then if it go wrong, it go wrong, it's going right because he's got his hand on it. Amen? Right, right. Amen. So how many of you are encouraged today? Amen. Are you not? Amen. 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 Also, um, you got to work Wednesday. All day. Who's on Wednesday? Okay. We'll talk. Um, Columbia College, we have got with them again this year. We'll be giving out a lot of gift baskets. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you are in need of a gift basket of any sort, um, please see Sister Dana before you leave today. Amen? Amen. And she might get your name down and then just get on the first lady for the sister because I'll be here. Um, and then we'll take care of whoever that person may be. Amen? We'll try to figure out. The best way to do it. I think we'll probably. Oh, Bible study Wednesday has been canceled. Amen? I repeat, Bible study Wednesday night has been canceled for Wednesday night. Amen? Amen. However, what I will do, if you'll, if you'll allow me, baby, yes. I will, we will be available at the church between 4 and 7 to pick up any baskets of that for food. Amen? Amen. Amen. No Bible study, but we'll be available for that. Amen? Amen. 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 Also, also, we have some exciting things coming up. I know I'm wasting a lot of time. I ain't going to preach long today. Um, get prepared. We're going to be doing some different things. Amen? Amen. Um, I've spoken with the prayer council. They got a great idea that we're going to be telling. I want to put it on because we're on the air. I want everybody to steal my idea. Amen? Said God gave it to them. I will be still passing the We got from God. But we're going to wait. But we're going to need a lot of help. But it's going to be very, very simple. Amen? It ain't going to cost you no money. You ain't got to bend over backwards. But it's going to be very, very, very fruitful to the people of God. Amen? Amen. 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 So um, our 2019 calendar has been completed. It is very, very, very light next year. And one reason that is because... Uh, we'll be doing a lot of things supporting the other people. Amen? Amen. 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 Who went to the nursing home in December? We went over the side. Sister Harvey, can you help me? Do you remember where it was? If I get you the name and the address, do you mind? Can you go by there this week? Or next? Can you? Can you? Yeah, she went. Sister Harvey went, I know. But I know her, she, she will organize about that. Can you go by this week and ask her, do they want us to come back in December? I can. Could you give me the address? Yes, ma'am, I'll get you the info. I will. All right, we're going to go back and sing over there like we did one night. It was very, very, we were very, very, very nice over there. Uh, the one that back to West. Think of that one there. Road 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 and right in January, my mom ended up being there. And, and see how God sets them up. We just went there to sing out of the invitation. And the next, my mom got sick in January, and she wound up being in that same place. And I think if we had opened them doors, we'd have turned the people down and had to burn all by and said, Can y'all help me? Yeah, we got you. Amen? Amen. Everything happened for a reason, guys. Everything. Stay humble and loyal to God, do not be turned. I'm going to say this, I'm going to get off this horse. You have to understand that people come in many ways. Some reasons, some seasons. Amen. It don't mean that you got anything wrong with you. Mm -hmm. Or is anything wrong with them. It's just a transition. God brings examples in. He pulls them out. He brings examples in. He brings them out. He brings the apples. How he does all that so that you can see the blessings mm -hmm. of heaven. Amen? Amen. Amen. No? Amen. Yes? Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hey, tight. You there I'm going to have to work hard. Y'all going to work hard. Y'all going to work hard. But God's doing great things. We're excited. I thank God for your prayers and your support. 
He said, we got things to do for y'all with my car accident. The week, uh, last week before last, uh, it was quick, it happened. I took the ambulance ride and the little neck brace and all that and bad shit. But God still blessed me. Amen? Amen? But if I had not went, I would not have found. I was having pain in my side, and I thought it was because, you know, maybe too much sugar or I need to, you know, drink more water, you know, cranberry juice. But what it was is when I got shot back in 86, uh -huh. the bullet grazed my kidney. But not enough for internal bleeding. I also find that the bullet now sits on my T10 and wow. my spine, mm -hmm. right above me. Mm -hmm. It wasn't big, Mom. But the scarring from the going across my kidney mm -hmm. is where I get periodically I get the pain. Oh, okay. So there's my thorn. Ain't nothing you do about it. Ain't gonna change. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> This lady trying to get paid. Don't leave her back. <laughs> she want to enjoy a damn dollar when I leave her. Okay? <laughs> they walk around like Casper the Frilly Ghost. <laughs> but with that being said, you, you know, if I had I not went to the hospital and did these CT scans, I would not have known. Right, right. And I, you know, I had some slight pain here and there. But God just really blessed me. He really wanted me to relax. Thank you. Yes. And it's like He just took the pain out of me for the time period I was gone. Amen? Yes, Amen. It's like this comfort here and there, but just throughout the whole week, he just made ways for me to get you know, to walk, do a couple of things, and I just thank God for that. Amen? I thank you for your prayer. That's all I got. Uh, anyone else with anything? Put your hands together for God today. Amen. Amen. Change for change. We start that today. Okay. If you have any loose change you'd like to bring into it, um, I'm going to do an informational, a full informational in the month of February on the 2020 vision. Amen? Amen. You'll have to come, you'll have to sit, you'll have to listen to me to draw it on a lot because it's, it's, it's a lot that's going to encompass it. Amen? Amen? If you are interested in wanting to know what this vision is really, really, really about, you don't want to hear it through the grapevine. You don't want to catch it on Facebook. Okay. You want to hear it from the person that can answer your questions. We're going to put out a date for you to come to that. Amen? Amen. Amen. I will say this. This is not in vain. And this is definitely not me. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, but I do know that he's going to do some great things. And in the midst of that, we're going to utilize what we have as a training ground for the next move. Amen? Amen. So that's why the calendar is going to be light because there's going to be a lot of things that we'll be involving ourselves in in government, in community based programs, in resource type stuff that we will be a training ground here. Amen. I wish y'all could smile like I'm smiling. <laughs> if I could share it all, they just leave the church right now. I think it's too much for them. I'm telling you, what we're going to be doing will set this community. At another level. Amen? Amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Amen. Amen. Look back out and say, You too. <laughs> Amen. So let's pray our hearts and minds for giving. Amen. 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 Yes. Yes. Amen. With that being said, we do know we have responsibilities. Amen. Amen. Do I need to stress that? Because you're not that good at that. Amen. 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 This is Thanksgiving time. Amen. Amen. All right, let's give us some thanks. Amen? Amen? God is doing some great things for us. Amen. Amen. I don't know what I'm doing.
He's been so good. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. There are so many ways he's made it possible for us to enjoy him. So I'm asking if you would just take the one moment to thank him for all that he said, all that he's done, all that he's saying, all that he's doing, all that he's going to say, and all that he's going to do. Oh, 
I tell you I'm depressed? I don't know I'm depressed. I want to fix it.
few more seconds. Hear God, please. chapter 4, verse 4, starting there. He says, Rejoice in the Lord sometimes. Always. Most of the time. Always. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, Rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto some. Always. Most men. Always. Unto all men. The Lord is at hand. But then he says here, Be careful for nothing. Yes. But in something. Everything. But in most things. Everything. But in everything by prayer and supplication with Thanksgiving. With Thanksgiving. With Thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. Yes. And this is where he blesses us again. He says, and the peace of God yes. which passes some All. most All. All understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. You may receive it. Amen. I'm going to be honest. These seven days have been plentiful for me. But not only for me, but for my household, for my family, and for this ministry. Amen. Though I was able to rest naturally, I was able to run spiritually. Amen. I was able to freely allow my mind to be open 
to God. And I got a glimpse of what the prophets battled with in their time. Abraham, Moses, David, Solomon, Jesus, of trying to be everything to everybody. And periodically you will see in the scriptures where even Jesus himself, being the Son of God, coming down from heaven, born of a virgin, needed time for self-reflection. Yes. Needed time without any distraction outside of what he designated to hear God. Now let's be honest and transparent. My mother could help me. She's been around a couple years longer than me. I understand now why they made that TV cut off at a certain time. Because it put you in a place where you either had to go to sleep or find something to keep you up. Well, let's rewind that again. I understand why grandma and grandpa them worked so hard during the day because it helped them sleep peacefully at night. All right. I also understood why they did not have a problem giving the house of God their time. Because they understood the consequences not really upon them, but upon their families not heading their households well. I understand when mama said, get up, we're going to church. That it wasn't just for her, for me to go. It was for me to go so that she would be able to say to God, I've done what you told me to do. Yes. Now we find ways and avenues to not direct, not just our children, but our spouses, our family members. The same cousin we can sit there on top of the hood of the car on Saturday, or the same one we don't invite on Sunday. Right. It's going to be right. It's going to be tight. The same ones that we simple Facebook and make friends with, we don't invite them to anything that we believe could bless their spirit. Short of a birthday party for one of our children, short of an anniversary dinner that we do periodically, short of something at the park or the playground, we don't encourage them with anything to strengthen their spirit. We can invite them to a game, but not to the gospel. So let's look at the text. He says, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Give an honor to God. To his son that died on Calvary's cross, to our comforter, yet still the Holy Spirit. To the best church my side of heaven, I thank you, Miss Woo! Woo! You all have done a phenomenal job. Not that I was even worried. And I couldn't do nothing about it no way because we was on the boat. So <laughs> it was what it was <laughs> back home. But me and my wife were secure in right. knowing. And it's ironic, you know, sometimes God will direct you in certain things. And he always gives you what I call the ram in the bush. Now, I'm going to say this, and I don't want you to, to not do this. I don't want you to feel like when I ask you how you're doing, <laughs> that I need something much. <laughs> I really want to know how you're doing. How you ever come? In the process of wanting to know how you're doing, I will always keep you with a purpose. Amen? Amen. 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 So he 
says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, Rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be known unto God. My brothers and sisters, my hand will encourage you today. Let's go into this great holiday that we're going into. Look at your neighbor and say, Pastor's going to preach you about a letter of thankful, a thankful giving. giving. A letter of thankful, of thankful giving. giving. Now, let me just bring you up to speed. I know you all are, are theologians. You love the Bible here. This book was written by none other than the Apostle Paul. And him and Silas actually founded the church in Philippi. And Paul wrote this probably about 60, between 50 and 60 years after the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. During that time, <clears throat> he actually founded this church on his second trip. Paul made three mission trips. Philippi he got with on the second of his third trip. But he established this, and believe it or not, I was telling somebody the other day, Philippi was, was considered the first community of established Christians. Now, it doesn't mean that they weren't pockets everywhere. Okay. Established means they had protocols. Mm -hmm. They had set some things in place. They had order. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. It, was one of the, it was one of the first in Europe, in Philippi. Now, Philippi is in Greece. You didn't know where that was. Yes, sir. Come on, Amen? And Greeks, I love watching 300. And here's why. They had a loyalty to country and to family like none I've ever seen. Amen? They were built on that. Them Spartans said, we fight for Sparta, we fight for Greece, and that's the way it goes. You can't change it. You can't move it. You can't stop it. And what am I saying? You got to start asking yourself, what do I really fight for in the morning when I get up? What do I really fight for in the afternoon when I'm walking around? What do I really fight for when I lay down at night and say thank you? What do I fight for that nobody can change my mind about? Not Is it about my serving with God? Or is it about making sure I paid my light bill? Now you like it. <laughs> but let God be your direction Amen. in what you do. But this letter was important from Paul because it was a role of the church not just being great but being grateful. And sometimes along the way, guys, you can do the inner workers of church so much. You get great at it, but you will be grateful about him. Wow. Yeah. If you're not careful, you'll believe everybody owes you something because you yes, did something. Sir. And it's not, it's not that you're a bad person. It doesn't mean that, that, you, that you're not following God. It doesn't even mean that you're not saved. It just means that the enemy likes to take three things. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Once he believes you believe you're good at something, he uses it against you. He's not going to use it to uphold you. He's not going to use you to edify you. He's going to use it to put you in two positions to where you're either impressed or intimidated. Well, look what he says. So why would Paul need to write such a letter to this church of Philippi? At that time, Paul was actually in prison. Yep. And the church gathered some gifts and had them sent by a member of the church to him. Yep. Can I put that in the natural for you? There are times that spiritual leaders, and you all are leaders because you accepted Jesus Christ. Ain't just so much about me. But there are times that your leaders, fellow leaders, are locked up. Come on, Reverend. And they just need a gift from you. That's it. Phone call. Handshake. That's it. Come on, A hug. That's it. A text. That's it. <laughs> email. Whatever you do. Somebody needs to know that when you speak, it's a gift. That makes sense. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. I, I, I use I use Milton because I, I, he's been with us over five years now, and every time Milton walks in, this, mm -hmm. in the spirit when he walks in here, amen. Mm -hmm. Every time he walks in here, he don't really have to say nothing, and it's a gift for me yeah. because there's a little pain I got in his left leg from time to time. That, 
First thing you know, every hour and a half, I got to get out and walk. Because we're going to stiffen it up. Because that's what, what Christ do. It is what it is. But I see this brother coming here every Sunday morning that he came. Mm -hmm. As if it's his first time. Mm -hmm. He has not got comfortable in this ministry. He has not got comfortable in our relationship. He honors me, I honor him. He reminds me why I'm doing what I'm doing. Yeah. Amen. I want to ask you to ask yourself, do you remind people of why they join the body of Christ? That's good. That's good. It's quiet, Reverend. Do you remind them why they got saved? Let me let that sink in for a second. Y'all was quiet in there, so I didn't sit there either. So we're talking about a letter of thankful giving. So what would we need to write such a letter? If we wanted to write a letter, the same way Paul wrote it to this great church, what would we need in order to write the same or similar letter? Glad you asked. Thank you. Let's look at the text. Philippians 4 and 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, Rejoice. Now rejoice, the Greek word, chara, C-H-A-R-A, C-H-A-R-A, chara. It's an intimate feeling of gladness. It's an intimate feeling of delight. It's also a feeling of accomplishment. What are your chara at? Where your child at, guys? You don't believe you've accomplished anything in life? And that's what the enemy makes you. He likes to bring up everything you failed in. Yes. <laughs> this is going to make sense in a minute somebody. I don't know who I'm talking to, but God talking to you. Everything you tried that you thought you didn't do a good job in, don't that seem to always flare up? And everybody minimizes the good things you try to do. Huh? And God is saying, you got to start accepting that he's giving you this child. Yes. He gave you joy. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. And he, but the thing about it is you're going to be, you have to be able to utilize it to share with other people who may not accept your child. Yes. They can't stand you walking in and smiling. Hey, hey, it's a good day. Why well, it's a good day? That's a good day. Because I'm here standing warm with blood in my veins. I'm here because God got me out of my bed. He could have been in a hospital. I could have been in jail. I could have been accused of something I didn't do. I could have been locked up. Thank you, though. Come on, Rick, Rick. <laughs> I'm teaching this morning. Yes, sir. What do we need to write such a letter? He said, first, we must be able to have, the, the, we have to have a letter by test and by testimony. In order to write a letter of thankful giving, uh -huh. you need to have been able in a test and a testimony. Can I be transparent? I'm going to break this down for you. <laughs> Here's the problem. I get stuck in the test. I don't get out of it. So I keep taking the test over and over and over. That ain't the bad part. The bad part is I keep taking the test over and over and over and learn nothing from it. But I talk like I got a testimony. But I'm still in the test. Because the testimony brings deliverance. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you can't give a testimony to something you ain't delivered from. Somebody don't get this in a minute. And a lot of times we're still in the test. I'm still angry. I'm still bitter. I'm still upset. I still got issues. I'm still depressed. I still don't want to move out of nothing into God. And so I'm still in my test. But I'm talking like I got a testimony. Does it make sense? Yes. Yes. So I got to start asking myself, am I really out of my test? How do I know? 
I should be able to at least acknowledge some of the things on the test. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I, like that. Uh, I may not remember everything on the test, uh -huh. but I should remember critical parts within the learning plan, lesson plan, to be able to explain what I know from the test. But if I'm standing in my anger saying, I don't know why I'm angry. I don't know why I'm angry. I don't know why I'm depressed. I don't know why I'm rebellious. I don't know why I don't trust nobody. I don't know why everything's happened to me. I don't know why everybody against me. But I'm talking like I'm in a testimony. Yeah, they thought they got me down. They ain't getting me down. They didn't do it. They still on you. Because you're still... Because you're still over here in your test. You're not in a testimony. Because in a testimony, I said, God, I thank you for every test that I went through, every trial that I went through. Please, Lord, get grace and mercy over those people, those places and those things. Because if it had not been for you using those folks, I wouldn't have been able to get through what I got through. That I can stand here now and say I'm a testimony. In a testimony, people this morning. That's a test. Yes. We're still in the test. Yes. Yes. You don't have a testimony until you can say, I forgive all that has been said and done. Yes. Lord, forgive me for all I've said yes. and done. Yes. That's the testimony. We're getting praying report. <laughs> that ain't the same thing. Y'all don't mind if I walk this this morning. Walk it, sir. So then he says, <clears throat> not only will you have to write a letter about test and testimony, he says, then you got to go to verse 5. Uh -huh. <clears throat> he says, let your moderation be known unto all men. All, all men. men. The Lord is at hand. Now, the Greek word for moderation is metrios. Oh, I had seven babies, though. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> well, I thought I was asleep. I did the part. I was awake. I just looked sleep. Yes, sir. <laughs> Metrios, which is really a level of measurement. Wow. Really? Wow. So you have to ask yourself, when you're giving a praise, it should have a level of measurement. Yes, yes. <clears throat> Your prayer should have a level of measurement. That's what moderation is. Yes. Uh -huh. Can I go deeper than that? Go ahead, sir. What good is of you doing anything in moderation without value to doing it? Right. Why do it? You can do it out of repetition, but that doesn't give value. I have to give it the value of what I do or I'll just continue to do it over and over. Mm -hmm. And then if I start expecting a different result, they call that what? Insanity. 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 Oh, <clears throat> Some of us want to be strong in God, but we don't want to pray. Come on. Yeah. But we want God to change things. Yeah. <clears throat> Some of us want a bigger prayer like want God to do some, some powerful thing, but we don't fast. Uh -huh. oh. uh -huh. Some of us are so big about the title we got, we got no totalness about us. There's no way, there's no way, guys, no way. that you can do this thing righteously mm -hmm. and not have stuff come against you. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. It ain't possible. Yes, Lord. Ain't nothing come against you. <laughs> Everything <laughs> always good on your street. Oh, you. It's always everybody else's fault. <laughs> your moderation wrong. Your level of measurement is wrong. And I stopped by to encourage somebody. You start asking yourself, I got to get my level of measurement up to where God would have me to be. We were, we were, we were, out, we were out on the boat and we had this, this couple we were, we were sitting with for dinner. And they were talking about this young girl that, that, that her mom was, was, was saying something to someone else, I think it was. And she was speaking real loud and being real loud about it. And, 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 and the daughter said, Mom, you got to bring it down to your level with your heart. <laughs> You got to bring it down, level with your heart. 
And what I'm saying is your level of measurement of what you believe God has for you, it got to come up. Get it off your feet. Get it off your leg. Get it off your head. Put it up here where your heart is so God can truly hear from you because he has something that he wants you to do. Anybody got a level of measurement they can at least wave their hand? Anybody got a level of measurement they can at least say, thank you, Lord? Anybody got a level of measurement they can at least say, hallelujah, Jesus? Because it's going to come a day. You ain't going to be able to say any of it. It's going to come a day when your phone going to stop ringing. It's going to come a day when people don't come visit no more. Two things, I, I, I'll repeat this once again because this is in the natural and the spirit. Two things you learn as you get older spiritually and naturally. Time and consequences. When you're young, time is not important. Consequences are not important. As you get older, in natural and in spirit, time is more precious. I know, I got, I got a little lady that I speak with that used to sit right here. Time is more precious than ever been before. I got some people in this room who can say time is more precious yes. than it ever been before. Yeah. Consequences. When I used to didn't care what I said to you, uh -huh. as you get older and gone, consequences. Yes. You don't got no problem coming down here mm -hmm. right, yes. and fixing it. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's how you know you mature. Yes. If they don't bother you, nothing you say, nothing you do. I'm crying for a reason. Because I will not die from the stress of doing God's job. Yes. I refuse to do that because he didn't put me in place for that. Mm -hmm. He gave me the spirit to be able to get rid of whatever yes. binds me from being righteous Amen. and doing his job. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so I don't look at it as a job no more. It's a journey for me. Yeah. As we get older, yes, sir. that's what it is. It's a journey. Mm -hmm. This ain't no job. Mm -hmm. We know that one of these are moments. Mm -hmm. And it won't be long. Yes, you don't look for me. Yes, you don't think that can't happen at 20? Yes. 28? Yes. 32? Saved or unsaved? Saved or unsaved. Yes. Married or shacking? Yes, sir. All right, sir. Mm -hmm. Lying or not lying? Stealing or not stealing? It won't matter. Death will come to us all. Yes, sir. I'm just saying while we're in this walk we're in, I might as well let my work speak for me. Let my life speak for me. That when God comes and says, Stanley Murray, I have need of thee in heaven, I can go up there say, God, I've done what you told me. To do. So, what do I need to write this letter? First, I have to have a test and a testimony. Secondly, this letter must be by quality and quantity. What good is quality? Without quantity. What good is quantity without quality? They interchange and work well together. All right. It's nice you did one good sentence. That's quality. <laughs> but of the three, you are out. Jesus. But you want to be judged on the one Sunday you showed up. Wow. Let me flip the script for all of them. You hear every Sunday. But you ain't having nobody since you've been here. We enjoy your quality of being here, but there ain't no quality in it. This is why we ask people. When you begin to walk in the anointing, I can't get out this anointing back in there. I had seven days of it. When you begin to walk in the anointing, people are drawn to you. 
And so I, I challenge each and every one of us and say, ain't nobody drawn to you? Don't mean you're a bad person. Don't mean you ain't saved. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It just means there's another place you need to come. Mm -hmm. So that when the anointing falls on you, mm -hmm. yeah. folks see it. Because mm -hmm. they, they don't, everybody walk by faith. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. But even the enemy see the anointing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Recognize. Huh? Yes. The Bible talks about a man that was Crazy as all crazy could be. Mm -hmm. But when the Lord saw him, he saw the Lord and the Lord spoke to him. He, yes, sir. Yes. You think he'll know anointing when he saw him? Mm -hmm. All them fake preachers trying to put their hands all over him, talking Jesus. and telling lies. He yes, done see them all over town. He know where they at, who they hang out with, what they do. <laughs> I'm just being transparent. Yes. He saw the true anointing. I'm just going to be honest, guys. If you're not desiring the anointing of God, why are you a Christian? I'm not judging nobody in this room. I'm just trying to get you into a place. If just showing up here at Sunday at 11, ain't good enough no more. That's what he's explained to me over seven days. It ain't good enough no more. You have got to start getting your vessel ready that people are going to be coming around you Believing God has given you an answer to help them in their walk. Yeah, yeah. But because you don't have the anointing on you at that time, yeah. you miss the opportunity for their blessing. Yeah. I'm always missing the baby. Yeah. Yeah. Am I having someone? Yeah. So what would we need to write such a letter? Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. He says, bring your child up, your test and your testimony. Then he says, have place your metrios, M-E-T-R-I-O-S, metrios, your level of measurement by quality and quantity. And then he goes to the last part of the scripture. I'm going to get out of He says, be careful for nothing. But in some things, Always. most things, Always. all things by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Mm. The Greek word for thing, because we all got a thing. Mm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Y'all don't have a thing. Prayer counseling. Y'all help me. We got a thing. Got a thing. Right? Got a thing. Well, the Greek word for that is pragma. P R A G M A. Pragma. Right? It means existence. All of us got something existing. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't always mean a negative thing. Someone's got a thing, we just got it. And we real good at it. Yeah, yeah. And God uses it. Am I making sense to somebody? Yeah. So if my fragment is my praise, don't worry about it. That's my thing. And I'm good at it. It exists around me. If it's my worship, that's my fragment. That's my thing. It exists around me. I'm good at it. It's my fasting. It's whatever I have. My sowing. My seeing. My sowing of God. It's what I have. It's my fragment. Don't worry, guys. It's going to get better. Take your time, so don't rush it. What kind of letter would I need? One of test and testimony. One of quality and quantity. And then the last part of the scripture says, you're going to need a letter of presence and of purpose. My God. What good is a love letter and ain't no love letter? What good is a love letter? Yeah, no. It ain't no love in it. <laughs> We're writing spiritual love letters to one another. It ain't no love in it, Mom. Mm -hmm. We're 
everybody in that and but. You're a great pastor, but. Love your heart, mother, but. You're doing real good, son, but. I'm a high level kind of guy. Because that means there's more you can do. What uh -huh. gives you an excuse? Mm -hmm. You know, real good. You know, you know, you did good today in school, but boy, you was a handful. <laughs> so do I do better in school? I just be a handful. Right. You're doing real good in school. However, there's more you can do. You can start building yourself up with a bigger praise, a bigger worship. You can start showing up and saying, God, I just don't want to just come and sit yeah. and hope it work out and go out the door. God, I need you to use me. God, we gotta, we gotta, you gotta do your yeah. service. You're gonna have me come here. We know the prayer doors are opening at nine. Why am I still coming at ten? Lord, you said you want to work for me. You said you want to use me. You said you want me to the next place. Why am I dragging my feet? Why am I wasting my time? Why am I going around the, the mulberry bush again and again and again? God, I need you to do something special in my life. And I don't know about you, but I'm excited about feeling that God wants to do something special with me. And so I'm asking today, is there anybody that wants God to do something special for them? If you want to ask God, why don't you take me, God, and use me as you would use me? Because I'm realizing that I need to have a letter of thanksgiving. But first, I got to learn how to thank you so I can give. And so, I gotta be honest. Uh -huh. God been real good to me. To me. Uh -huh. He said, "What? We wipe away my tears. Yeah. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What would take away my fields? Yeah. Nothing but the blood of Jesus." I stopped by to tell you this morning. That I need you to go and sit down at your spiritual desk. And I want you to find you an eight pen of existence. And I want you to start writing down some things that God would have of you to do. And as you begin to write down those things God would have you to do. I want you to add in everything that you believe God is going to bless you with. Now, while you're looking at the things that you're writing down, I want you to stop being so selfish about what you don't like about this and like about that. For all that's designed to keep you in the hole that you're in. See, the devil will let you wallow all by yourself. But what he really doesn't like is when you realize that you can be some blessing to somebody else. He wants you to walk around and say, nobody cares for me. He wants you to walk around and say, nobody loves me. But I stop by to tell you that God's love is above all and every love. And all you got to do is find a way to get cozy in God's love. Because it's cold out there, right? You got to start getting in a place where God can use you. But I hear about the one called Jesus. About the one called Christ. Say, Lord, I need you to use me like a leopard. I'm going to lay down and put on my white sheet. That you can lay me down, my God. I'm going to take my blood and leak it for you, Lord. That's going to be the ink all over the cross. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Because he bled for you. And he bled for me. And the good thing about a good leopard is when you know you wrote it real, real, real good. You take that letter and you fold over the part of it. And you know it's your kind of letter. And you know you don't want to handle the envelope. You don't mind leaning across the letter. Because you won't do nobody else's letter like that. What God done bless you with. You can run your tongue across it and seal your own letter. Is there anybody this morning that can seal their own letter and get your mail and address right? I'm talking about a place where he received mail 24 7. He'll take express mail. He'll take last minute mail. 
He'll even take a mail with no stamp. But I heard that he come around daily to make sure your mailbox is open. Stop doing this, huh? I know you got your letter and you walk out to your mailbox, huh? but then you got a neighbor who huh? starts distracting you, huh? talking about this huh? and talking about that. Huh? You're trying to get to the mailbox so God can hear your prayers. But you got this nosy neighbor talking about your stuff. Man, I saw you last week. What's going on with you? They ain't gonna help you put the letter in, but they'll sure help you take it out. Talking about them nosy neighbors. Say, bro, I hear what you got going on. But I gotta step out on my own thing. I got a mailbox God got for me. And everything that I put in, my car collects it back, and I heard, I heard, I heard, I'm talking about Jesus, that great man of God, and you got your letter, and you came to letter himself, every sin that you did, every ink that you wasted, the blood, the blood, the blood, that's your new ink now, the blood of Jesus, now you got a real letter, huh? the letter of forgiveness, huh? the letter of restoration, huh? the letter of deliverance, huh? the letter of healing, huh? the letter of depression. Huh? Oh, I got rid of that one. Huh? I don't need my anger letter. Huh? I don't need my rebellious letter. Huh? I got new letters to write. Huh? Is there anybody this morning got a new letter to write? Huh? Say yes. Huh? Yeah. 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 And then you get the letter, you put it in the bar too. Sock there on Monday. Sock there on Tuesday. Sock there on Wednesday. Sock there on Thursday. Sock there on Friday. Sock there on Saturday. Sock there on Sunday. Well, he only socked there three days. But the letter was already ready. It was waiting to be postponed. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You put it in the bar too. Let us sock there Friday. Mailman still make around. Not there on Saturday, the mailman still make it round. But I ah, one Sunday morning, he got up, he got up. If you believe, you got mail in your box. Get on your feet, say yeah, say yeah. Listen, what has God got to do to get your attention? He said his grace is sufficient. Yes. And that sounds real nice on paper. But we really don't know what that means with God. God can have that level, that grace, remove you from this earth. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. God wants to do great things in each one of us. He wants our attention in what we're doing. He said, I know you can say it. I want you to say it for me now. I know you can preach and teach. I want you to preach and teach for me now. I know you can counsel. I know you can come to church, but I want you to start coming for me now. It's not about so much of impressing people as it is pressing your way. If you press your way, the impression will come on on its own. So I'm gonna offer today. If you believe God has spoken to you this morning, you want to give your life unto Christ, won't you come? Let me say, you know what? I need a place of accountability. I need to be a member of Mount Zion Tabernacle Christian Church. I need to come now. Won't you come? Or maybe you say, you know what? I need to come. 
because God told me to walk up here. Won't you come? And I know he's talking to me. And I don't need no help. I know he wants me here. I want to come. To hear my heart. To make peace in my life.
this was truly a service for me. I ain't gonna, I'm going to be selfish for a second. And everything was said was said for me. And I'm going to take it and I'm going to run with it. God's calling, guys. 2019. Let me help you here. Any odd year preceding the even year is always a year of importance. 2019 is a preparation year for 2020. Say it, Reverend. And whenever the numbers come together like that, special things occur. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, let me go in with this. This is Holy Ghost, not me. Next year going to seem like a hard year for some of us. Do not quit doing what you're doing. Amen. Do not quit serving. All right. Do not quit giving. Right. Do not quit coming. On, Do not quit praying. Amen. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. You're going to lose some things. Yes, yes. You're going to lose some people. Oh, you're going right. to lose some places. Yes, and it's going to scare you because you had lost it before. Mm -hmm. But it's only to get you strong yes. to walk in and appreciate 2020. This was not by accident. A 2020 vision. You yes, understand me? I didn't, I didn't even, someone gave me that. I called a member who actually can't even get here every Sunday. And they prayed on it and said, this is what God told me. And it confirmed directly in my spirit. 2020 is going to be a year of abundance. However, you still got to get through 19. Yes. And so the devil is going to tell you, shortcut your role with God. Oh. Don't pray every day. Oh. Don't, 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 don't make it your prayer up your lay body. Don't go no way. Oh. All right? Oh. Child, they ask you for two more dollars. Don't give it to them. Don't you make no initiative either. Don't you do more. Mm. <laughs> but what you don't understand is there is no harvest without a planting. Mm. If you sow sparingly in 2019, yes. I promise you in 2020 you won't have nothing. And if you think you got it in the natural, you still won't have it in the spirit world. Okay? You're going to have plenty of money and no peace. Amen? Amen. 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 Shall we stand? You got anything? Amen. 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 I just need a couple seconds for our mothers before we leave. Um... say this. The Holy Ghost says this. Listen to what the Holy Ghost says. He said, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways are directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed. Then shall I not be ashamed. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall learn thy righteous judgment. Here's the part for us all. I will keep thy statutes, O forsake me not utterly. Father God, we come right now to give a prayer, God. Thanking you for being who you are and all that you said and all that you've done. God, I ask right now that everyone on the side of my voice have an increase, God, for the desire of your anointing. God, I also ask that you understand it's going to take the role of holiness. And the perfection that we think about God is not the perfection that you know. It's not about whether we've never done anything wrong. It's not about we've never said anything wrong. It's about when we have said and done wrong, we're convicted to come unto you, that you might wash us white as snow. So we thank you for the perfection. 
of you being able to wash us and all that we've seen and all that we've done. So in the grace of our God, the love of Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may rest from the by his for now and forevermore. As we walk by faith and not by sight. Give y'all the glory, all the honor, all the thanks, and all the praise. And so we say, Amen. Amen.